Good afternoon and good day, everybody. Um, we are here with a good session today on using alternative text and what its purpose is um, uh, for a website for several different purposes. And then also the reasons why you should be paying attention on um, a library website and how you can use it appropriately. Uh, we'll go over what alternative text is, what its purpose is, um, we'll have a bit of a demonstration by a screen reader of how uh, alternative text is um, used and interpreted by a screen reader. And um, then we'll go over some uh, best practices for using alternative text. The um, caveat here is that we are all learning. This is something that is a good practice and something for us to be uh, striving for, but we are all learning. Uh, and I think it's going to be understood that everybody's efforts, um, everybody's efforts are appreciated, but we all know that we're a work in progress on this um, from the top down to the bottom um, in using this. Um, Megan over in Bloomer is going to be my co-presenter today. She has been working a lot with narrator and um, using screen readers and uh, has helped co-write some of the content for today um, with some of her work. And um, the recording for today, I hope will become a useful for everybody who is uh, curious, but also know that we have a website accessibility group, work group, where we are working on learning about this together. So if you have more interest, you are welcome to uh, put your name on a hat to learn some more about uh, with this with us all together. Uh, any questions up front before I dive into the content for today? Okay. I am going to share my screen first. And so, oh, the other thing that everybody needs to know that was listening in today or um, here on the recording, um, there will be a screen reader involved in this. So as I start sharing screens or as other things happen, you may hear the voice uh, popping in and out. Just know that it's there. It treat it like we were um, working with somebody who is using assistive technology today. So uh, we'll see what happens. There'll probably be a few technical glitches as we go forward because we're doing some creative presentations today, but we will hope you have a uh, good idea of how this actually functions in the real world by the end of this session. So I'm going to share, move you over a little bit here. Okay, so we are going to start today. Everybody, I hope, is seeing my, let me just see what you're seeing. Yep. Um, so seeing my uh, screen with our introduction to alternative text as presented on our library's uh, win.org training website. This simple overview, we'll just start with a basic overview of what alternative text is and um, what it's for. And so as we do this, alternative text, what we're talking about is some background coding that goes as a description into any of your images on a website. It describes the image for that can't be viewed for some reason. And there's actually several different reasons for this. Um, but the most obvious one is if you are somebody who has no vision, low vision, a blind individual who needs to access information on the internet, we all access it visually um, in the, everybody here who is here in this group right now, but a lot of these, a lot of people do need to use an assistive technology which reads the information out loud. So if you have an image on your website, the only way for the computer to interpret what that image, image is, because AI hasn't gotten that far down the road yet, is for us to manually describe what is in that image. So our tutorial today will talk about um, the purpose of alt text all text as explained by a screen reader um, or is described by or read by a screen reader, alt text and your library website, and then how to write good alt text. So there are actually three purposes for alt text. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, take team here a little bit with Megan um, because she's got some experience with this. But our main three reasons for using alt text is for the screen readers, as we described, but also um, in the case of having, a, as many of our library people do, they have low or slow internet um, access or uh, broken links. 
if you have slow internet or you have limited data plan, you may not get your images to fully download. And a lot of us might remember this from the days of dial up where you got a nice big blank broken link image. And this one is an example of um, this. This should be an image of a basket of fruit with grapes, bananas and apples. And because alt text has been used here, um, if a person has a slow loading website and they're not getting all of the links downloaded fully and images downloaded fully, at least instead of just saying blank or um, maybe image in this space, you at least have an idea of what the image should have been on your website. Um, and then I'm going to let Megan take over and talk a little bit about what search engine optimization gets um, with uh, with these with um, alt text and why it's important. So when you've got images on your on your website, when you've got those bots that go through and crawl the web, find information out about your website, if there is nothing related to the image with alt text, it comes up as blank data. Um, so that's a strike against you with where you link rank in the um, when people do a search for like your library or something, or like a program you're running. Um, the other thing, alert Karen the, more, the, meeting. the more you read, like a program, say um, thousand books before kindergarten, the more it is on your page, and that would include your alt text plus the text that's in your um, post, it pumps you up. It makes your site more relevant when people are looking for something related to your library. So one example we were talking about this um, is if somebody is searching for um, library story time near me, you know how in Google it a lot of times it'll be like you search for something, it'll be like near me or in Google Maps. Um, if you have a website that has, if, if your um, SEO is better, if your search engine optimization is better and your images are properly tagged. If you have a story time and you are in the geographical region of this person who is searching, they are more likely to find that a result in their Google results that specifically says, um, you know, like uh, Phillips Public Library has a story time at these times. And you're um, more likely to be easily found in there. So this is why we talk about some search engine optimization options and how alt text can help you for that. We will talk a little bit more about this in the month of March. We're gonna have a training on um, search optimization and knowing how people are using your website. So um, that's, but it's something that alt text feeds back into really well. Any questions on any of that so far? So it's additional work, but why do we do it? Um, because of the these things that we can do for um, increasing our finding and, and making our websites more accessible, this is why we're going to make the extra effort to do alt text. And this is something Erica needs to work on. But what, let's do an example first of what alt text is like when it is read by a screen reader. So Megan. Can you, how do you want to demonstrate this? You want me to stop sharing or do you want me to keep the window open? Okay, if you're talking, I'm not hearing you, sorry. There. Yeah, so you want the alt text post that was created, correct? Right, yep. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Task for alt text gene. Yes, you want me to, and you want work. you want you just stop. Alt alert from Jean Wolf to everyone. Is it possible to remove her mask because she sat refreshing page? Alert Erica Brewster. WVLS and libraries win has stopped screen share. Loading complete. Link has pop up about WordPress G equals Kissick Family Memorial Library link. Two updates available. Alert Carissa Langer has joined the meeting. Refreshing page. Loading complete. Link has pop up about WordPress G equals Kissick Family Memorial Library link. Two updates available. Link. Zero comments in moderation link. Has pop up new edit post enable okay. visual builder link zero comments in moderation link has pop up new edit post enable visual builder search edit nothing selected nothing selected and this is what it is life with the screen reader yes <laughs> alt text ge books family memorial library has finished loading closing tab 
just one second. <laughs> link, link, powered by WordPress, you are now logged out. Username or email address, loading complete, scan off, history document, mm -hmm. search tabs from other devices, all text GE Bolskisic Family Memorial Library and six more app bar. Selection pasted, scan off, at backslash, okay. C0 okay. or N2. <laughs> you want me to do the videos? Dollar P and Bloom. Closing tab, Zoom logo, graphic, support link, English Zoom, graphic, link, copyright, copyright 2024 Zoom Video okay. Communications Incorporated. Search, WBLS Summer Math Adventure Grant Now, address and search bar, edit, search Google or type the URL, control plus L, alert Chrome theme colors have been refreshed to work yeah. better. Whether you're in dark. Okay, so I'm going to go You're getting it? 7155682384 Monday, Friday, 9 30 a.m. Okay, now you have to share your screen. <laughs> okay, I've got it ready to go, I think, finally. Okay. Give me just one second to Ask reload the page. I'll text GE Bolskisic Family Memorial Library. Google Chrome okay. seven one five five six eight two three eight four Monday Friday nine thirty a.m. to six. Okay, just a second, Megan. You need to share your screen. Task Zoom meeting window. <laughs> Actually, no. GE just Bulls have it read Memorial it. Library. Google Chrome okay. pane. All text GE Bolskisic Family Memorial Library. Seven one five five six eight two three eight four Monday Friday nine thirty a.m. to six p.m. Wednesday nine thirty a.m. to eight p.m. Saturday nine thirty a.m. to twelve p.m. fifteen nineteen seventeenth Avenue Bloomer Wisconsin five four seven two four GE Bolskisic Family Memorial Library, image, link, home link, catalog link, about three link, services three link, resources three link, programs, three link, calendar heading level one, all text January 18th, 2024 link, uncategorized print friendly, PDF and email, image, what is alt text? Alternative text is a short written description of an image. This describes an image that, for some reason, cannot be viewed. This is an especially important feature for people with a visual impairment. Alert from Catherine, Bruce to everyone, is this Cortana reading a web page, blank, Image, well-written alt text is important for both website accessibility and search engine optimization. See ya. Well-written alt text makes people with screen readers happy. Black background with a smiling face. Image, the best practice is to use more than 50 characters but less than 250 characters. Think X, formerly known as Twitter. When writing alt text avoid using the following words. Image, photo, graphic. The purpose of alt text is to describe the image in relation to your post. A good site to check your character count is link. HTTPS colon slash slash word counter dot net slash character hyphen count. This site will count your characters, words, and lines after you paste in a wording you used for your alt text. If your image has text that matches your textual post, you can reword this so that the screen reader won't reread the same information twice. If you are using more than one image, this can be annoying if everything is read more than once. It would be equivalent to your audiobook or DVD skipping back and replaying the same scene. Alt text should be a normal step for every image uploaded to your media library. Image. Alt text should be a normal step for every image uploaded to your media library. Versus or versus colorful alternative text best practices. Image. Alt text should be a normal step for every image uploaded to your media library. Things to be aware of when writing alt text. Some abbreviations do not translate well when read by a screen reader. Numbers sometimes are run together when read by a screen reader 9 to 6 or 9.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Edit. Button. Search heading level 4 recent posts link. Your garden in a pot. Zoom meeting window. Alert from Erica Brewster. WBLS and libraries win to everyone. This is Narrator, the Windows 11 native screen reader. <laughs> okay. So... That was a quick read through of a website that I will now share, uh, or a web page I will now share, and it's loading. Um, so what what we just listened to was a narrator reading everything that is on this page, uh, on down through, and what it read was this: "What is alt text?" and what you don't catch because you're not visually seeing it is that this image, this black image without, um, with the, with the sunglasses 
does not have any alt text behind it. So if you if you're listening and this is the only way that somebody with visual um, impairment is accessing your website. They, the only thing they hear is narrator saying image. And that's it. There's nothing there beyond that. This one um, has alt text, which is written behind there. And the alt text that's behind it, if you listen, is that, um, uh, that alt text makes people with uh, screen readers happy. Notice that that's not any printed anywhere on this um, page to be read. That is entirely um, a description of the image. Um, the other pieces to take away from this is uh, that a best practice to using uh, for alt text is to use characters, uh, 50 characters to about 250 characters, about the length of a tweet or X, whatever they call it, an X now. I don't know what they call it in Twitter. Uh, but about 250 characters would be your uh, final limit. And But to use more than just one word, uh, you want to actually describe the content of your photo. And then there is uh, a link to a character counter that narrator read off for you. Um, if your image has text in it, um, then you don't... If, reword it. Um, if there's if there's the chance that the screen reader is going to read it, um, you want to make sure that your image text is a little bit different because a lot of times you will put the text of your image into the text of your document. You don't need to copy and paste that into your alt text. It'll just reread it. It'll loop it and you'll just end up hearing it same twice. Um, have it read something a little bit different. So this one, um, it has a, if you listen to what the narrator actually read, and there are recordings of this on the um, training page, so you can go back and listen to it um, as it reads it. This is different than what the actual content of the of the um, post has. Finally, um, as much as alt text should be a a, a normal step, um, things to be aware of is that, and this is what Megan is learning, um, and our accessibility website group is learning is that um, with, uh, we normally abbreviate a lot of things on our website. If we have like nine to six, it'll read nine dash six. Or if you have, as Megan has said to me before, a avenue, for example, here on the, on the uh, website, they have avenue um, written out because it turns out even with common, um, common abbreviations, this would be read as Ave. If you use just A-V-E, the screen reader will say Ave. Or street might be st. So using, avoiding, and when possible, avoiding abbreviations or writing out 9.30 a.m. to 8.00 8 p.m. Um, you may need to test it on a screen, re a screen reader, which is a whole other session. We can go way deep. It's about 20 lessons long on how to use a screen reader. But if you were to test it with a screen reader, you might find out that um, your screen reader is saying silly things like 936, which doesn't tell you anything about open hours for that. So again, when you write your alt text, write out full words, use a phrase, use a sentence, use descriptives. And don't um, limit it based on, it's not a caption because the person who is using this is not able to see the image. The computer crawling it is not able to see the content of the image. The um, broken, poor internet uh, service individual is not able to see the image. So you have to use a description for your alt text. Okay, so again, um, if you want to come back here and you want to re-listen to what narrator does, uh, we did make a recording so you can listen to what it sounds like uh, and, and versus what it looks like. But remember, most people who are doing this are engaging without actually having any visual cue to work with or very limited visual cues. Okay. So I am... At this point, I'm going to switch over to, um, or Megan, do you want to do the, okay, we're going to switch over. I'm going to stop sharing and we're going to do some real life practice with this. 
Alert Erica Brewster. WVLSN Libraries win a stop screen share. Okay. So we'll go to the WVLS website and um, Zoom window. Zoom video some container. examples. Okay. WVLS Summer Math Adventure Grant now open Wisconsin Valley 715261725 open Monday, Friday 8 a.m. 5 p.m. Help at libraryswin.org. Link, Wisconsin Valley Library Service. Image, link, home. 2 of 7 level 1, heading level 1. About 3, 3 of 7 level 1, heading level 1. Libraries 3, 4 of 7 level 1, heading level 1. Services 3, 5 of 7 level 1, heading level 1. Resources 3, 6 of 7 level 1, heading level 1. Professional development. 3 link. Calendar heading level one WVL. Okay, Megan, you do right need now. to share this screen. Basak February 8, 2024 link. Featured post slider. Link. Youth blog. Math. Image. Okay. The 2024 WVLS Summer Math Adventure Grant is a pilot project and opportunity for WVLS libraries to offer or enhance math-based activities throughout the summer. Alert from Rita Magno to everyone. Can you slow that narrator down? Annually. The link. Nope. Wisconsin <laughs> Mathematics Council creates a summer math program for public libraries to offer to their patrons. 3H targeted adventures are available preschool, kindergarten through second grade, and third through fifth grade. Libraries that receive a WVLS Summer Math Adventure grant will receive $500 to offer the Wisconsin Mathematics Council Summer Math Adventure program to youth in their communities. The grant may be used to defray expenses that participating libraries incur when implementing this new program. Why is WVLS focusing on this program? Early math skills are just as crucial as early literacy skills in forecasting academic success, said Christy Howard, WVLS Public Services Consultant. Math skills help improve concentration, memory, problem solving, fine motor skills, critical thinking, creativity, and foster a love for learning. Alert from Rita Magno to everyone. At that speed, it's like it's spitting at you. Math concepts are part of our daily lives, including shapes, measurements, sorting, comparisons, patterns, and counting. Alert from Erica Brewster. WVLS and libraries win to everyone. Narrator actually is built to read much faster than this. Christie said the program is an ideal way to keep children engaged with math concepts during the summer months. The program enables children to maintain and practice their skills even when school is not in session. The Wisconsin Mathematics Council has compiled activities and instructions for the program into digital booklets, making it easy for libraries to implement the program. When offering the program, the Wisconsin Mathematics Council requests host libraries to provide a completion award and bonus award. WVLS is offering member libraries this grant to minimize financial barriers and to make implementation more attainable, she said. Alert from Catherine, Bruce to everyone. Could I share something on the Bruce website? I have tried to add the text that is okay. shown in pictures separately. So, Megan, let's stop now and let's go back to, I'll go back to sharing. Um, but this is a really good example. Um, narrator is actually, this is very, this would be considered very slow for I somebody who is used to using it as Marika the slowest Brewster. setting. WVLS and um, libraries meant to everyone. Yeah, no, I just, it's like when you are able to listen to <laughs> audiobooks or videos on 2x speed. Um, so, it's, um, it, it, like some of you might be used to using, um, uh, like uh, to Overdrive or Libby, listening to podcasts and, or podcasts or, um, audiobooks or videos online that you can up the speed on those. Um, many people are used to listening to at eight times speed. If you listen to like a real, a real individual who is very accustomed to a screen reader, you would never be able to understand the word because they're talking so fast. It's very, it's, they take in that in a way that we using visual cues just don't have that. So this is actually slow for narrator. Um, they would find that very annoying for, for the rest of us. It's a lot to learn. Um, I'm going to go back to the example of what, um, Megan had it reading and I want to share with you what, there was a lot more information there than, um, necessarily is, is being read. Come on, share screen. Alert Erica Brewster. Yes, I am sharing the screen. screen share. So we are looking at the WVLS Summer Math Adventure post. This is a post just like you would be making on your website. And the, the post has the title and the content. And there's some other things that we could pick about on, on some of these other things um, on how we do links, but we're concentrating on the image today. So this image is the image, the featured image on the blog post. If we go in on the back side of the website to look at what this looks like, the alternative text, the entirety of the alternative text for this image is math. So step one, we've broken the rule of at least 50 characters. Math is four characters. So we are not in any way describing um, what this image is. So if somebody couldn't see it, it is mainly a featured image. It is mainly an image that is just supposed to attract attention on your website, but there is more content here than there is, um, than just the words math. Math can mean a lot of things. So, 
if you were to describe this image, because anybody want to offer some examples of what might be a way to describe this image um, that is more than just the letters M-A-T-H. I could do that. I would say a young boy is standing at the chalkboard um, showing examples of uh, addition. Two plus two equals four and four plus four equals, of course he hasn't answered that on that problem yet. Would, would that be like what you would put on there? It's a little wordy. A little wordy, okay. Yeah, because it's uh, 50 characters to 250. So it's really, it's a narrow. <laughs> Let's you try. Some of, so. You could use okay. some of to put in. So what if we put this in? So now we are up to a character count of 77, which is probably a little much for this particular image, but okay. Okay. So would it just be like child at chalkboard doing simple addition? Megan, um, I think there were some rules too about not using, and, and, and so like back to Chris's and the first, between the Chris's um, edition and Catherine's, or, <coughs> excuse me, um, not using gender, not using right. racial. Kind of neutral. Keeping it neutral unless it is pertinent to that. So instead of saying a young boy, saying a child to keep it gender neutral is good, but been doing addition rather than just doing math. So Catherine, you had that in your piece too. Um, how does that sound? Megan, what do you think? I think it sounds good. <laughs> so then putting this into um, alternative text and, and then again, if we go back to our character count, we're down to 41 characters. So it's actually a little short. Alert from Arena Magno to everyone. So you Aren't you supposed to make it all caps for the best reader response? You could add oh. addition problems. So that was a good question that um, Rita had too. Should it be in all capital letters? Do we need to worry about punctuation? Do we need to worry about? You don't need to worry about that because the screen reader, when it reads it, won't say if it's capitalized or anything like that. <laughs> Because it's just reading what's in there. <laughs> because when you get into the um, coding of it, it'll be all in little brackets, and little fun special shapes and symbols and everything. So it's not really readable to the normal person, <laughs> but it is to the web robots <laughs> or the box. Is it better? Is it better if it's more like a complete sentence where it's actually a child at a chalkboard doing simple addition problems? Should it have that extra in there? Is that getting you don't have much. To do that. It's it. You okay. don't have to. You need it to make sense, but you don't have to get that in depth into it. <laughs> so let grammar slide. Right, to back to everyone. Some readers don't do well with lowercase. This is true, Rita, but this is not being read by a visual person. This is being read by a machine. So when we update this. Um... You'll never see this on your end. It's all behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I actually like having the chat being read out loud. That's kind of handy. <laughs> so if I come in here and I refresh, uh, okay, so Megan, can I can you, can I stop screen share and I can have you. WBLSR map adventure right. grant now. Okay. Have you read it again? Or have you? Alert Erica Brewster. WELS and libraries with a stop screen share. Scan. WELS summer map adventure grant now open. Wisconsin Valley Library Service has finished loading. Task bar pane. Scan off. 715-261-7250 open Monday, Friday 8 a.m. 5 p.m. Help at libraryswin.org. Alert from Karen Couch to everyone. Does a period help the reader pause between words? 715-261-7250 open Monday, Friday 8 a.m. 5 p.m. Help at libraryswin.org. Link. Wisconsin Valley Library Service. Image. Link. Home two of seven, level one, heading level one, about three, three of seven, level one, heading level one, libraries three, four of seven, level one, heading level one, services three, five of seven, level one, heading level one, resources three, six of seven, level one, 
Heading level one. Professional development three link. Calendar. Heading level one WVLS summer math adventure grant now open by link. Jamie Mazak February 8, 2024 link. Featured post slider. Link. Youth blog. Child at chalkboard doing simple addition problems. Image. The 2024 WVLS summer hey. math. Got it. Nice. Um, so the question came in chat, um, does, uh, Karen asked, does a period really help the reader, help the narrator, the screen reader pause between words? Not really. <laughs> it really, um, there really isn't much that you can do to add emphasis that I found. Have you found anything, Megan? No. Oh, you're muted or... Oh, no. Yeah. Um, not really. Um, it seems like the biggest break is when there's a, like you do a new paragraph because it reads in the coding that break. And then it'll pause for the break. So, right. And it's not a big pause, it's a little pause. <laughs> mm -hmm. It really does run it together. Okay. So, that's a good example. So, let's go back also to some of this. Just how do you upload a new image with, um, when you are adding an image to your library. So I did have an image queued up. I always have to find it here. Oops, in the wrong file. Okay. Uh, okay, so these are these are actually book covers from the Bruce Library. So you're doing this. Um, so if I were to select this file and I edit it, this is where you would come up with the alternative text. The other place that you might find it is on the side um, when you're actually making a post. But anywhere um, when you're uploading it, this is where you would insert the alternative text for your uh, for your website. So this one might be, give me an example of what the, this is, uh, Madeline, uh, a book cover. What would you write for the text on this one? I think that most libraries are probably familiar with this children's book. Um, so I believe that that's the Eiffel Tower in the background. So that is, can somebody else describe that better for me? Is that like a, an adult with a bunch of children walking on a path towards the Eiffel Tower? Okay. But that's very descriptive, isn't it? Okay. That's spelled right, but. Yeah. Other thoughts? I would clarify that it's a book cover. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Would you? Yeah. Book cover depicting an adult. And then should it include the title and author as well? Depends on if your post is going to have the title and author in it. Oh, okay. If you're not, yes. <laughs> so that again, and, um, avoiding avoiding that repetition um, of the screen reader reading what is already going to be in the content of the post. So if if the post was specifically about "Come and Read Madeline" by Ludwig Bellums um, during our story time, and then you just have the book cover description. If it's one of several book covers for whatever reason that you're using, then if it's if it's relevant to the understanding the content of the post, include that um, wherever it is. Erica, um, so if it if it, if the same image might be used differently in different circumstances, we can change the alt text in our image module when uh, we use it. So this is the alt, this is like the default alt text. Correct. And when we use this image, if we don't change anything else, 
it will use this alt text. But if we find we're using it in a context where the where the title and author isn't used on the page, we could then, um, when we're doing the image on our page, we could change the alternative text. That is so, a really good point. Yeah, so when we're doing it in the media file here, we mm -hmm. could just do like what we think is the best case is the most use. Um, and then if we, we can check it when we add our image and check it again to see if the alt text is the most relevant for, for what we're currently using it for. So I think that's a really good point. If you are um, if you are mainly doing this on um, featured post images, so if you're uploading and you're not reusing images, so you know, so most of the time, my guess is, and tell me if I'm wrong, when you're um, making a new post for your website, you're grabbing a fresh new image, you're adding it as a featured image, you're adding it to your media library. If um, you are recycling an image and you're using it multiple places and multiple um, different applications on your website, then you need to think about when those different places, uh, in those different places in the website, redoing the alternative text in those areas. And so what Brendan was saying is, so if you were to actually go to a page, and I'm not going to change, I'm not going to save this right now, but um, I'm just going to pull up a page here. I'm not even sure what images are on here, but this this actually might be a good. Alert comes back to everyone. Just an idea. Mm -hmm. um, ah, could you use AI, Chris? I, I like the way you think. I've, I've checked several of those apps that you can download or plugins, and they don't do a very good job of making it relevant to posts. Oh, of course not. I checked that out when I was working on this whole post with alt text. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. It would be so nice if you could just take the image and go, give me a description for this, and it would just do it. No, I've heard. Okay, sorry. This is a total, I don't, I'm going to get off topic for two and a half seconds here um, because I want to come back to this later. But I've heard that Windows 12 is going to come out this fall. So just when we get, we all have Windows 10, we're still getting used to Windows 11. Just when we think we're there, Windows 12 is coming out. And Windows 12 may have the ability to read images read words on images and read images. AI Right now, AI probably isn't any better at it than um, some of the other things. So this is actually really interesting whether or not we could do that. But in this case, let's, if what we want to make sure of what we're doing, and this is actually probably not a really good because Brendan, we're running into design issues that I am seeing right here. None of these images are their own Divi module. They are all integrated into a text module. So all of these images, no matter where they are used on the website, are going to have the same alt text. If you want to be very careful about the alt text being different in a different location, you need to upload it to a Divi image module as a standalone thing and change the alt text there. And if I just went over some of your heads, as long as you're sticking to doing um, alt text for images within posts, you are 99% of the time fine. If you are designing a page and you want different alt text, be aware that that is something you need to talk to. If, and you're not entirely sure how to do that, that's something for us to talk about um, as, a library, as a help ticket for your website. Did we just lose everybody? <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you're right, like like almost all the time, your your one alt text that you've chosen will suffice. I just thought that you can, it's possible to change it for different within an image. Yeah. Alert from Rita Magno to everyone. Different do we really uses. need descriptions for all those posters? Well, if do you need descriptions for all these posters? If you cannot see this website. If you are blindfolded and you're only being have it read to you, what would this page look like in your head? I'm just thinking that, you know, um, 
for visually, nobody reads all those. They look down, you know, and you see all the faces, and that's it. So it just seems like you could eliminate the alt text in like the last nine of them and do a plural on the first one, one of 10 posters of representatives or something like that, you know, on the website. Because, I mean, I think of this as like a cataloging, the cataloging effort, you know, um, mm -hmm. it, it's not worth the effort to put in a description on each one of these, um, unless you're trying to get support from that particular representative. And we are. Mm -hmm. And right. we are. But you could just put a plural in there, you know. Um, for the first one and get rid of all the text so the other ones are invisible. I'm well, thinking of small libraries if I was building, you know, a site. And, of course, the advantage to small libraries now is that you have these wonderful tools mm -hmm. to make a wonderful website. But bogging yourself down in, like, this kind of a, a job, um, the time it would take to build that in for all of these things. I just, when I look at it, and like you say, yeah, the next the next two, uh, two versions, you know, uh, 14, 15, and 16, they're, they might do it for you anyway. You know, you're doing all that work. Um, that's just my two cents. And that's I fine. think you yeah. also have to think about um, SEO and things like that. Um, it is a little more work. You, you've kind of got to remember it is just mouse clicks, and and you how many people are coming, and we have a responsibility to everyone in our community, you know, especially we're using public money. So and it is just mouse clicks, and as you go, once you've cleaned it all up, it'll be easier after that. Um, but these, what Erica and I found is that when we considered these accessibility changes, it cleaned up our website immensely. Like it actually was much better for people, for fully sighted people taking these accessibility um, considerations into account. Suddenly the websites just cleaned up and it was, it was much more clear even for us. So I think it's it, it is an interesting, you know, we do as human beings, we we want to get to the point and then we want to move on. And so and and at what and where is that point? You know, where do you stop fiddling around with your website? You know, I get I get what you're saying, Rita. Um, but for for many reasons, and you know, anything any um I just posted a web aim dot org link um which is where a lot of our ideas are coming from it's an organization that specializes in website accessibility and nowhere on there would it say you can just not do some of your alt texts you know it's just it's just really not a con you want your whole page to be as accurate as possible one thing for people with vision impairment and the other thing for for um for your SEO, so which is actually really it's it's very important to to commercial websites, and really it's just as important for for us. Um, we need to be accessible to everyone in the community. Everyone needs to be able to find us, um, find what they're looking for. We're offering services to everyone. They need to be a, a, able to find them, and so we need to be as vigilant as possible. So in all this ties in, it's actually really, it's actually kind of neat that it all ties in. It helps people who are searching. It helps people who have bad internet connections. It helps people with visual impairments. Um, and it all links in. So actually the time spent is, is time spent well because you're actually not just catering to one group of people. You're actually catering to everyone anyway. Um, that's what I would say on that. I'm just thinking just as a response, well, a couple of thoughts. One being that I have worked in libraries. You're the only staff person. So you're the only staff person doing everything. And you know what that would mean? 
when I'm looking at my website, I'm going to start eliminating. I'm going to eliminate the graphics just to avoid all of that. And then secondly, it just reminds me, I've been here on this planet long enough to remember a time when the internet was just whipping up and librarians thought that they were going to sort, that they were going to be the ones that organized the internet. And, and of course, you know, it, it was a natural way to think because that had been kind of our role, but our role changed when the technology changed and we realized, oh no, that's just not possible to do. And that's what I'm wondering with this, we're putting in, we're at an, uh, an intermediary step right now with this kind of technology and you're going to do a lot of work and then two steps down, the technology is gonna do the work for you. Not that it's not worth doing. Don't get me wrong. I think you're right. Um, I think I want to invite this conversation to also come to on Thursday. We're going to review like how to make a blog post, just basic back to the basics, but to integrate the alt text into that process. And I think at that point, this is a good point to like look at what amount of extra work is it? Because I, I totally agree with you, Rita. I am... I've done this in small library, big library staff, not, this is an extra step. Um, it is extra work. However, I want to put it into practice into what a blog post is. I'm not talking about going back and redoing your entire website today. I am not talking about going back and doing your entire web. This is a going forward sort of piece. And how do we build a better website from a, from, the blog post you start doing tomorrow and and just keeping it because already you're already attaching a featured image to a blog post that's a step now the hardest part i think is getting into what might be the good words for the alt text and right now any words really any words are going to be good um we've got some general rules but even if all your alt text says is child doing math it's that's something <laughs> it's and, and so I would like to continue this conversation um about that about the time piece um only for images for blog posts going forward and for those who are building pages and stuff how do we build that page more consciously does that help a little bit yeah, and I'm looking right right at this Takafi calendar, and mm -hmm. we're doing that um, for each, you know, each entry, each post on the Takafi calendar. We're mm -hmm. doing the alternative text there. As, there, I mean, boom. Yeah, I'm the one creating it, so I know that we're doing it there at that level. I'm okay. just thinking of when I was in that teeny tiny library, and yes. the more you add, the less you get done. You yes. know, it's just impossible. <laughs> That said, the teeny tiny library in general is doing less programs. You maybe only have one blog post a week, maybe even one blog post a month. Um, or the smallest libraries, you're not doing blog posts at all. Um, and that, and I'm not saying it's, it is all keeping it relative and keeping it balanced. And where do we put one more sentence into our life that will actually benefit a lot of people um those are slow internet those searching for your things these are better practices to put in and maybe someday the computers will be able to actually do it for us in a good way you're right i think we're going to see some changes um, but yeah let's talk about this again on thursday um when we do talk about uh blog posts um and just keep it part of our conversation. Uh, not saying you have to turn around and change everything on the website today. Let's keep this part of our conversation. Other thoughts?
I think, oh, actually, Rita, to your point, I think one of the bigger challenges, and this is something Brendan and I can take under um, consideration as we design new websites, what I see as extra work here, uh, Bloomer, you've got this lovely um, uh, Talkify calendar with all of your events, images, and all of these things popping up here. Now you have a blog post that may have the same image you've had to add alt text and upload an image in two different places. Right, This I is a, at the same time. <laughs> yeah, and this becomes a challenge because now you're duplicating your work, mm -hmm. you're doing alt text and maybe you here you've got, um, I did see this power of attorney one. I did see um, the Tuesday morning story time in your um, post slider. Well, great, but um, now you've had to do uh, 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 come on, where'd you go? Where's my arrows? Uh, da -da, da -da. There. So now you have your Tuesday morning story time image here on your uh, on your Divi WordPress website, and you've had to go over to Talkify, which is an external thing, and add the same image over there, duplicating your alt text and other demands on your image work. That could be if you're at a library where you really don't have time to manage, because it's legit, it's totally legit, you're a one person show, um, to manage both a Talkify calendar and your blog post slider and your images in both places. This is where if you're going to have a calendar and um, you want that on your website, maybe we eliminate these blog posts and we don't do any blog posts and you only put the information in a Talkify calendar and we feature that on your website. So there are some very legitimate, very good questions about what, how do you, how do you streamline and efficient, make efficient your work processes so you can still make it alt text, you can still make it accessible, but you're not doing it in three different places. And this is that is a challenge for Brendan and me um, as we go forward with creating new website designs and working with you to know what your capacities are. Does that make sense? Your your concern, reader, is a very valid one. Yeah, that that time into into the website when it's clearly not your only job for the day, um, and we're thinking about that a lot. Um, how to get a good how how the librarians who are maintaining their websites can get a decent flow and into maintaining what what they have to and and not maintaining what they don't have to you know so yeah it's very I would, challenge <laughs> yeah and i would say megan would you say is i mean most of it if you 90% of it is getting a reasonable description in that alt text. Right. You really don't, I mean, five or 10% is, five or 10 percent is kind of really nailing it down, but really 90% is a decent, a reasonably decent description of what what's in that image. It really doesn't have to be super amazing. No, it, it does not have to be real in-depth. And I try to be if I'm going to use the image in multiple places, I do it at the same time or save whatever name I'm going to use if I know I'm going to use it at a later date. So then I can just copy and paste it. Oh, there's another fun technique. Yeah. Um, when you save an image to your computer, make the image name your alt text. And then you can just pull it up to the alt text um, line. Not to mention, it'd be a lot easier to find things on your computer because you've just described your image very nicely in a non-visual way, which is what I was struggling with in the downloads there. Which one is this? Alert, Karen Couch has left the meeting. Okay. Uh, it is almost two o'clock. Um, Catherine makes a point that, you know, she's like, um, it's, it was interesting to hear how narrator reads a calendar and reads some of the other information. Um, it's definitely an experience. And um, fortunately for many of us, we don't ever have to deal with a narrator. Uh, but I think that this is um, a good conversation to continue. Alert, has left the meeting. And I would love to hear your feedback on, on Thursday um, when we're gonna talk about blog posts again. I think that's a good point. This is where the rubber hits the road. When are we gonna do the work? 
and how do we make it easy for us? Okay, well, I'll stop recording for today. I'll hang out for a little bit if you guys still have questions. Uh, let me find my buttons here.